Is this whole notion of body positivity making the problem worse? I believe that a bit of fat shaming goes quite a long way in making you think, actually, really? Okay, I better do something about it. Now, listen, I know I'm talking about Piers Morgan being controversial and using various topics just to stay relevant and get views, and obviously I'm doing the same thing. I do think these topics are so important that... I'm going to use his name. Piers, you can tell, has this agenda when he has this guy on. And he was a chef. Apparently lost a lot of weight. But I really liked him in the clip. And you can tell Piers has an agenda that he wants to get a story out this guy that fat shaming is why this guy lost a lot of weight. I'm joined now by great British menu star Tom Kerridge, who famously lost 12 stone. And how, how big were you at your biggest? Oh, I was over 30 stone. 30 stone. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. in that moment, what was the trigger for you actually saying, I've really got to do something about this? Mates Just... of yours or family or viewers, whoever it may be, were people making comments to you that made you think, you know what, about your weight, about your size, were people, mm. was that part of it as well? No, 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 none of it. It was all self-conscious. Any straight away kind of shuts down that idea. There was a story about James Smith going on this morning and he said this morning wanted James Smith to fat shame Piers Morgan and that was the whole agenda. They asked me to go on Good Morning Britain and to fat shame Piers Morgan. The thing is, there are actually idiots out there that would go on to live television, bomb their entire career to get on TV. I think the secret actually to losing weight is you somebody needs to shame you into it okay say, go ahead you out of what you are <laughs> go and do your worst james i use the word fat but i don't around don't go around calling people fat you know what the media are like they're desperate they'll do anything even in the opposite interest of the public they don't want to do the public a service they want the public to watch them to the cost of themselves they don't give a shit the chef was amazing and he brought up so many good points, socio-economic factors, poverty factors. But my point is, does fat shaming, if you, you know, when I, when I put on a bit too much timber, I can absolutely rely on one of my sons. The first thing they'll do is, is say, God, you put some timber on, right? I believe that a bit of fat shaming goes quite a long way in making you think, actually, really? Okay, I better do something about it. Well, not all of us are in the same fortunate position as just me and you. If you do you think fat shaming is wrong? Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is about education. A lot of it comes down to education. Mm. A lot of it comes down to poverty. And if you think of the most, the majority of places where you'll find that most people are morbidly obese are places where they come from economically challenged areas, where the foods that they can afford are down that process. Right. So a lot of it will come down to food poverty. When someone is overweight, this idea that they're fat because they're lazy or they've no willpower and it's their fault, it's their responsibility, they're this burden on the health service, they're costing the government so much money. All of this plays into weight stigma. It's, it's a massive problem in the country. And I'm not saying, look, we're somehow going to make everyone not judge someone who's overweight. That's obviously an idealisation. When I was young and growing up and I had my, my mum was severely depressed, pretty sure schizophrenic and all that now, I've went through a lot of this on my podcast. I was eating whatever I was given. And whatever I was given was, was whatever we could afford. It would be chips and chicken dippers. My mum had really bad rheumatoid arthritis as well, so I'd be cooking for myself a lot or just making my own food. It would be two bowls of humongous amounts of cereal. Are you going to tell me at 10 that I need to take responsibility for my weight gain and I'm fat and lazy? I would argue that would have made me fatter. I was heavier between like 12 and 15. I rampantly gained weight from those ages and then it calmed down but it was at the forefront of my mind all those years i would say it was 80 to 90 percent of my thoughts i was aware i was overweight and i was trying to change it but i was overwhelmed and many other people are in situations like this where you can say it's someone's fault but unless you know what that person's situation is you, you can't really comment anyone that would be like it was your fault you were fat and i was only ever like overweight up until i was about 18 i'd be like Okay, you're going to go around and tell all children it's their fault, they're overweight. Okay, and then what? And once you become overweight or obese, the longer you are overweight or obese, the more and more health implications can arise, can make it harder to lose weight after that. So it's getting more and more complicated and simple sayings like fat shaming works are just completely moronic. And it's something you would hear your uncle say at, at Christmas. Your uncle 
that has never left his hometown thinks COVID was a hoax. That's what you're up against when we're talking about things like that.